All right, we're going to be doing quadratic equations. We're going to be solving them, and we're going to do that. We've been solving quadratics by factoring them and then doing the zero property. But today we're going to be um, taking the square root of both sides, okay, mm -hmm. to do that. And so we're going to get started with one. Um, and so this is similar to when you're just solving equations. We're going to move that 7 to the other side over here, okay? We're going to do that by, how are we going to move that 7 over there? We're going to add. That's right. We're going to add 7 to both sides. If we were to do, do it the way we had done it before, we would do this. Perfect 7 doesn't have a perfect square root, so it doesn't really work. So we're going to actually do it by adding the 7 to both sides. And we'll get x squared equals 7. We've done something like this before, I think. Where we were, when we were doing the um, Pythagorean theorem, you solved it by taking the square root to undo that square. Wow, that's been a long time long ago. Long time ago. And so whenever you take the square root of both sides, you have to make sure you remember to, that you have two answers, okay? Right. Because I'm going to go back. Um, if I plugged a number in there, I could plug in the square root of 7 squared would be 7. Mm -hmm. I could also plug in the negative square root of 7, and that would also, when I squared that, that would undo that negative, which would turn into a positive 7, okay? So, when I am taking the square root of both sides, I will have two answers. I will have the x equals, and then we got that because we took the squared and the square root canceled out, and we'll have plus or minus the square root of 7. And that symbol just means we have both the positive and the negative. Okay? Oh, okay. All right? So whenever we take the square root of both sides, we have a p positive and a negative. Oh, okay. All right? Let's do another one. We could do this one the way we've been doing it before. We could take x minus 9 and x plus 9. Oh, so And we'll get... Be x equals plus or minus 9 there, won't we? Mm -hmm. And if, we get the same thing. And we get the same get thing the if we do the square root of both sides. So if I was to do it the square root method, I get the same answer. And now you can kind of see why I'm going to get both of them. I'm going to add the 81 to both sides. And it's just faster to do it like this. Yes, it is. I think it is. Take the square root. But the thing that's the trick with this one is you have to remember that it's a plus or minus. The last one, it automatically comes out. So we just have to remember that when you take the square root of both sides, you have both plus or minus the square root of that 81, which is 9. Okay? Right. So just don't forget that part. Okay. Okay. This one's a little different. Now we have the squared, and buried inside the squared, we have that x minus 5. So we got to get rid of that, that squared. So if I took the square root of both sides, I would be able to get that squared off. So this squared and this square root will cancel each other out. And so I'll just be left with x minus 5, but be very careful because you'd be tempted to say that the square root of 9 is 3, but it's the plus or minus 3 because we took the square root of both sides. We have to have both. Okay. Right. So I'm going to add 5 to both sides, but when I add 5, this really means that I have a positive 3 plus 5 and a negative 3 plus 5. So I'm going to have two answers. This time they won't be the same. Like last time I had 9 plus or minus 9. This time it won't be that way. They'll be two separate numbers. What's 3 plus 5? Um, 8. All right. And What's that'll be 2. Yes, and that'll be 2. So this time I have two separate answers, not plus and minus of each other. Okay? Oh, okay. All right. All right, let's do this. this uh, there's a little precursor that i got to get to before we do this next problem. The square root of 25 is 5, and that's because 5 squared equals 25. Right. Does that make sense? What's the square root of negative 25? You can't. You can't, because... Yeah, because just, it wouldn't... It's still going, so I guess... Okay. All right. You said you can't, which is exactly true, because there's nothing that multiplies by itself that to give me a negative, negative number ever. Because a negative to equal a negative number, I have to have oops, one negative, one positive. One negative and one positive always. And so it won't work to have the same thing twice. So this for right now, for algebra one, we're gonna call this impossible. But when you get to Algebra 2, mathematicians weren't satisfied with this impossible thing. They actually, and it's a whole branch of mathematics that works and really does work. They've, they've come up with a, 
a workaround in a sense, but it's it's a it actually comes up when they do a, um, engineering and electrical engineering. It's something called I, which sounds similar to impossible, but not quite. <laughs> but um, right now, if what you're going to do, if you ever get something when you're taking the square root of a negative, you're going to just say that it's it's not possible. But I want to tell you that when I was in school, they told me it was impossible, but didn't do this little clause and said. Then later, when my other teacher said, we got an I, they're going, what? My teacher told me it was impossible. So I'm just telling you that it's, it's going to be possible in a little while. Okay? I wish they would have just left it impossible. <laughs> All right, we're going to do the next one. It's going to be this. You're going to have x squared plus 36 equals 0. Okay? We're going to subtract 36 from both sides. And we're going to get x squared equals negative 36. Let me take the square root of both sides. That's right. We're going to be taking the square root of a negative value. And so this is not possible. And so they have just had you write this. Okay? All right? And which is true because this is not, this means no real numbers. And so there is no real number when eventually when you get into Algebra 2, we'll call them imaginary numbers. And so they'll be outside of the the classification of real. Okay. okay. All right. So this is not possible, and that's the symbol of no real numbers are not possible in the real numbers. Okay? okay. All right. So we have just taken the square root of both sides. Oh, that's right. It's yeah, it's not there anymore. So we just take the square root of both sides to solve it. Just remember that you have a plus or minus. Okay. Okay. All right. That's not